Go. With reportedly over 3 billion monthly users, it's listed as the 10th most popular site in the world. But recent allegations claim Pornhub may be profiting from footage of sexual assault, revenge porn, and sex tapes obtained without consent from those involved. Dr. Oz Show senior investigative correspondent Mars Campo has the story. On the surface, Pornhub may seem like a racy but still relatively mainstream site, one that even donates to charitable causes. But explosive reports have alleged that behind this facade lies a site that posts exploitative content, often without the consent of their subjects. Like the 14-year-old who was videotaped while being raped by two men and begged for her video to be taken down and the nine-year-old from China who was trafficked by her adoptive family, and the girl who was blackmailed into taking naked videos of herself at just 15. Those are just a few of the countless alleged victims who say their lives were shattered by Pornhub. Some fell prey to drugs and homelessness, and many have attempted suicide. Historically, Pornhub allowed users to download content, so even if a video was removed from the site, it could be uploaded again, potentially haunting the alleged victims for their entire lives. Just recently, the company disabled this controversial feature. In December of 2020, Pornhub's parent company, MindGeek, was hit with a $600 million class action lawsuit by people claiming the company had been sharing explicit images and videos without their consent since 2007. Finally, some of these victims are being heard, but with many of their traumatic videos still living on the internet, will they ever truly get justice? Maros Giavacampo joins us now. Pornhub has been up and running since 2007. So why now? Why the backlash in 2021? You know, they've long been criticized for a lot of their content and practices, but a recent New York Times investigation revealed some really troubling content that also is seemingly illegal. The New York Times spoke with a number of victims who said that Pornhub was aware of the problem and was doing nothing about it, was allowing users to share this material widely. And the New York Times was able to find, as part of their investigation, extremely troubling imagery, including child rape. I should offer that the author of that article is my classmate from college, Nick Kristoff, who uh, I think shows the power of good journalism when you do it right. So do you have any idea how many people may have been affected by this content? You know, it's hard to say for sure, but we can take a look at the traffic and kind of get an idea. So this site started in 2007, and at their height, they were hosting 13 million videos oh, that could be uploaded and <laughs> shared by anyone without any restrictions or verification. So we're talking about potentially hundreds of thousands of victims with video of their sexual assault and abuse being shared and circulated widely. So what repercussions are they facing? Well, right now they're facing some pretty hefty repercussions because all of the major credit card companies, including Visa, MasterCard, and Discover, have cut ties, which makes it virtually impossible for them to collect subscription fees. And advocacy groups have applauded this move. Additionally, one group of lawmakers has introduced legislation that would make it possible for victims to sue platforms like Pornhub when they are posting content of sexual abuse. Now you might say to yourself, if you're watching, why would you need a law to allow someone to sue for being abused online? Believe it or not, I've been fighting for this for years, and I hope you get this is on your radar screen now. There's this thing called Section 230, right? And what it basically did was protect all websites. Back in the day when we didn't really know what these websites were about, they didn't want them getting sued. So they said, you know what? Let's pretend that these websites are like fax machines. Effectively, it treats websites in a way that you know, protects them from anything coming through. Because if a fax machine has pornography on it, it's not the fax machine company's fault, right? That's not the case, obviously, is it? Websites can do much more than a fax machine to determine what kind of content there is coming through their portals. So Pornhub, how have they reacted to these accusations? Because if Section 230 is changed, now all of a sudden, children who are being sexually abused could litigate and protect themselves. Yeah, they absolutely can do more. And in this case, now Pornhub is because the money talks, apparently. You know, the New York Times spoke to victims that said their complaints went unheeded, that Pornhub did nothing in response to their complaints. But since the credit card companies have cut ties, they have now put some measures in place. They have removed now, Dr. Oz, 80 percent of their content, going from roughly 13 million videos to 3 million videos overnight. It shows you the power of what they can do when they want to. In addition, they've also put restrictions in place for users, that users now have to be verified in order to upload or share videos, so at least there's some accountability.
Laura, thank you very much. Thank you. Joining us now to discuss how she says Pornhub almost destroyed her life at the age of 14 is Serena. Serena, thank you for being here. You're only 14 years old when you say Pornhub turned your world upside down. What happened? Well, I had just moved to a big city from a really, really small town. And the school I went to had so many more kids than what I was used to. And I ended up you know, having a crush, my first crush on a guy in my, well, he's great above me. Um, and for weeks and weeks and weeks, he was pressuring me to send him videos. Um, and I was super uncomfortable. I kept saying no. But after, after so long, um, you know, he tried to use, oh, well, if you don't send me this, you don't actually love me. You know, we're not in an actual relationship then. And so, um, and so I sent my first, like I sent the first video I had ever sent to anybody. And a, a few weeks later, I started noticing that the kids around me were snickering. They would give me looks and, um, they started like talking about me behind my back. I would get notes in my locker and and then somebody anonymously sent me a link to to the video I had sent him and it had been posted on, on Pornhub. So it after that it was just it, it was everywhere. How did the school and your mother react when they found out that you made a video, you were naked in the video, and it had been uploaded to Pornhub without your knowledge? Um, well, okay, so I didn't tell my mom because of the, because of her views. I, I already knew she would be very angry and how she would react, so I didn't actually tell her. Um, and then the school, like, somehow the school didn't find out that I had sent the video, they knew a couple other girls had sent videos and that they had been going around. And so um, the boy that I had actually sent it to was on his phone during class, like um, I guess on Pornhub showing some of the other boys in his group, um, the videos, some other videos of the other girls at my school. And uh, he got caught on his phone on Pornhub and he had gotten uh, expelled from there. But um, I didn't tell my mom. I know that you had taken this video off Pornhub. Were you successful in g getting rid of the video so no one else could see it? Um, no. I, at, after I found it on Pornhub for the first time, I messaged Pornhub pretending to be my mom, uh, saying, hey, that's my daughter, she's only 14, this is child pornography, please take this video down. And they didn't respond for two weeks, and then they said, okay, yeah, we'll take the video down and they waited another week, then the video was taken down. And then a week and a half later, the video was uploaded again under a different title. And so I went through the process all over again and I got it taken down again and then it was uploaded again. And it seems the more times that I would ask them to take it down, the longer it would take for them to actually take it down and the more views the video would actually get. Oh my goodness. All right, coming up, Hal Serena says the effects of being exposed on Pornhub almost cost her her life. Are you being watched without knowing it? Our alarming investigation into home security cameras. I would hear voices in the living room. We've been talking about the recent allegations that internet giant Pornhub is profiting from sexual content obtained without consent from those involved. We're back with Serena who says Pornhub repeatedly hosted explicit videos of her at the age of 14 without her permission and she couldn't get it off their site. How did this affect you as a 14 year old knowing this material was out there and that you had no control over it? Um, I, I started getting really anxious. I've been dealing with anxiety ever since because I, like people at my school, guys would try to blackmail me like, oh, you know, the video's already online. Why don't you send us some more? Everybody's already seen you naked anyways. If you don't send us stuff, we'll send the video to your mom, knowing that I hadn't told my mom yet. And so I started, I started ditching school. I started self-harming. Um, I started just trying to avoid, I tried to avoid the situation because I didn't know how to deal with it without, you know, getting 
adults involved, which I didn't want to do because I was afraid of. I'm so sorry you went through that. And I, I know you, you ended up homeless, living in your car. Yeah, um, so I started ditching school a lot, and then my mom found out I was ditching school because the truancy letter came in the mail. And when that came, we got into a huge argument. Um, I still didn't want to tell her what was going on, so she kind of just thought I was being lazy and that I was doing drugs and that I didn't want to, you know, do school anymore, that I was going to just basically give up and drop out. And once that happened, I ended up just staying around wherever I could, mostly in like behind uh, 24 hour stores because I knew, you know, somebody would always be there. So if I got attacked by somebody on the streets that, you know, there was somebody there that could help me. So I stayed at a lot of 24 hour gas stations, um, 24 hour uh, grocery stores. And I would just, I'd just sit there all day waiting, well, all night waiting for it to be day again. And then when everybody would go, you know, to work during the day, I would find a tree with a little bit of shade and sleep behind it. But I'm doing better. <laughs> but you're still going through a lot. Uh, let me speak to one of the adults you finally have in your life that might help. Syrian's attorney, Michael Bowie, is with us. Michael, how are you trying to hold Pornhub accountable for what happened to Serena? Doc, thanks for, thanks for uh, covering this and raising awareness. It's, it's, it's really important. Um, the first thing we're doing is attempting to hold Pornhub accountable and people in the industry accountable for attempting to basically uh, discredit a lot of these accounts and minimize the problem. The fact is, this stuff happens, and it happens often. There are many accounts of that, from newspaper articles, from the New York Times, from Nick Kristoff, from victims, uh, from government organizations. The second thing that we're doing is also just uh, debunking the other uh, argument they put out there, that this is somehow directed at consensual adult uh, entertainment or porn. It is not. This is about child pornography and rape. Um, there are instances of not just child pornography, but also adults who are raped and it's videotaped and it's put up there. Women who are trafficked and it's put up there. And it's not just Pornhub. Pornhub is the flagship in the industry, but it's ubiquitous in that industry. And uh, we will be bringing claims uh, in short order. Um, against uh, those responsible in this industry, including Pornhub. And so we're gonna to start to hold these companies accountable for their obligations until they start holding themselves accountable like they're supposed to. So Pornhub removed over 10 million videos, that's about 80% of its content, from its site in response to these allegations. They've also prevented any new material from being uploaded to the site unless it comes from a verified user. That's the, the terminology. Uh, do you think that's enough, Michael? No, it's necessary, uh, but it's not sufficient. Uh, but what it does do is it shows you how big the problem was. 10 million videos that they had no idea whether they were consensual or not consensual. Um, and so at the end of the day, um, there is no way to deal with this issue effectively unless you are actually going to have some compliance function that ensures that the people who are posting material are posting material that is consensual. There's just no other way about it. So, Serena, what message do you have for anyone who's listening to your story? Um, I would just say that don't wait as long as I did because I'm about to be 20 now and I just barely told my mom and my family what was happening. Um, so I would just say, don't wait as long as I did. There's people out there that will help you. There's people out there that will support you. Um, you know, just changing schools won't really help it if it's on the internet. So you really, if you're, if you're underage and this has happened to you, speak to an adult that you trust and have them, you know, give you more options because doing it as on your own as a minor doesn't really do much. Serena. But there are people that will help. You're a brave woman, Serena, for coming forward. Michael, good luck with your endeavor. Pornhub has issued a statement saying in part that they are, quote, unequivocally committed to combating child sexual abuse material and they've instituted a comprehensive safety policy to eradicate illegal material from our community. Pornhub added that any claim that the company allows child videos on the site is irresponsible and flagrantly untrue.